Hello and welcome to C Programming Zero to Neural Networks, where we learn C programming from scratch all the way up until neural networks. This part is not going to be a proper part, and it's not going to be a sort of an installment in the uh, series of learning uh, C programming. I'm, um, basically, I've been working on some examples. I'll show you what I mean. Um, I've been working on like example programs to work up to. In this particular example, um, just trains three ASCII images simultaneously, which, as an introductory to neural, neural networks, is a good idea. But uh, it, it's um, one particular type of learning. I want to do a bit of reinforcement learning, and I've not experimented a huge amount with reinforcement learning. So I figure the best way is to build the hello world of reinforcement learning, which is to make a snake game and then get a neural network to learn to play it. This is what we do for reinforcement learning. So. I've never built a snake game before. Um, I've never even attempted to build a snake game before. And uh, I've never looked at anybody else's code for building a snake game. So I thought it'd be quite an interesting thing to do and I may as well make a, a, an installment and part out of it. So the way I see it, I had a bit of a think before starting this video. Uh, the snake board, the snake game exists on a snake board, doesn't it? Which is like that. You get the idea. And then we get a different color. We randomly generate an apple somewhere. And then we have a starting snake, say it's here. And uh, this guy moves that way. And then you sort of use your arrow keys to move around. You collect the apple. And then you randomly generate an apple somewhere else. And then your snake gets one bit longer, doesn't it? It's simple. It can't be that complicated to program. And I figured that we should be using linked list because a snake has a head and a tail. So what, what has a head and a tail? A linked list. So we want to have like snake segments, don't we? Which are connected in a linked list. One of them which is the head and the rest is a big long tail. I'm guessing that's how we do it. Let's find out. Let's program it. Let's, um, let's uh, this is going to be a bit of a, uh, if I spend too much time explaining it all, as I go along um, in excruciating detail, like where we're up to in the series, or we've just covered comments, then um, it, this would be a 10 hour video. And uh, I would rather stream this, but I don't have a uh, fast enough internet connection to do uh, streaming of any decent quality. So let's just make a video of running through making the snake game. So we're gonna need a C file, we'll call it snake.c, and I reckon I will include a separate header called snake.h. I was still, I have left, no, I left that running. And we're going to need a main function where we return a zero as per standard. Right, we're getting somewhere. And we're going to need a snake.h where we're going to in the standard input output library. We're going to need to include the standard lib because if we're doing linked lists, we're going to need a bit of malloc. I'm going to need a graphics library and I'm going to use STL because I like STL. Will that do us? We're going to need standard bool. Because we're going to be using bools for true and false. That'll do us. That'll do us right. That all looks good. Let's make a make file. Tegan's using make files for everything because the Linux kernel uses make files and I figure if it's good enough for the Linux kernel, it's good enough for me. So let's say use GCC, C flags, Let's throw down all the warnings, um, incl includes, we need slash user slash include slash sdl2 we're going to need libs minus l sdl2 we have to link our libraries we're using the sdl libraries we have to link it um source files are snake.c obvious equals sources dot c equals dot o and main equals snake. We will call our project snake. Right, now we need to build all that, don't we? So 
main objects cc c flags includes okay, so main objects and libs and we'll do dot c dot o cc c flags includes and c is that one isn't it and then o is that one convoluted syntax making make files if you're into them you're into them i'm just um I like the make and make clean once you've done this bit. So, um, asterisk dot o asterisk dot may tilde may. That'll do, won't it? Got a snake program we can run, does clean work. Right, I think we are ready to go. We've got our build environment set up. Double, uh, double dot. So, have you ever programmed anything in SDL before? Well, you're about to find out how we do it. So, first of all, with SDL programming, we create a window. So we need a, a pointer to a window, and then we need a renderer. You don't have to use a renderer. You can use surfaces, but I like using a renderer because you can use hardware acceleration. And as we're making a snake game, we're probably gonna need a bit of hardware acceleration, aren't we? We'll be joking. <laughs> it's gonna be not a particularly powerful game, this is it. Running at 120 frames per second on our powerful GPU that I don't have in my laptop here. <laughs> um, so we need to init the video, and we usually do SDL init video less than zero f printf, and we put error SDL init video, and then we need to create our window. Uh, SDL create window. What shall we call it? Snake, obviously. And then we set the window X, the window Y, the window width, the window height, and then the window flags. So we're going to define these up at the top, but window X, window Y, window width, window height. This is going to be a bit of a speed run I'm afraid because otherwise like I say it's going to take three hours to explain it all. Right, define window x y width height. Window x zero, make it a thousand by a thousand just to see if it works. That should all work, right? Let's do it if not window f printf. Basically, we want to check if that's worked. If SDL, well, it's not going to work because I've done that wrong. If SDL create window has worked, and we're going to, if this is pointing to nothing, basically, if not window, if it's pointing to nothing after doing that, then it's not worked. So we're going to print out an error. We're going to do stder -E not window. Not going to do anything with that error because I'll just fix it straight away if it's an error. Um, and then we need to do the same thing with our renderer. Renderer equals SDL create renderer. And here we put the window minus one and SDL renderer. Accelerated, that should be SDL window borderless, shouldn't it? And we can do the same thing again, we can make sure that that is initialized correctly. F printf std error not render it. We're getting there, we've almost got a window. SDL destroy render it at the end of the program we want to clean all that up so free all that memory sdl destroy window window and sdl quit we just put sdl quit don't we 
So I'm going to test if all that's working. So let's set a color, SDL set render color, is it? Render draw color. Render at 0x, 0, 0x zero, zero ff, make it green, SDL, SDL, render clear, I think we have to do that first, and then SDL, render present. Render and then STL delay two thousand. So all being well, that should pop up a window for us. Incompatible type. Why is that an incompatible type? I spelled something wrong there. R E N D E R E R. STL render. Why? No, it's not got the color right. I'm doing something the wrong way around, are I? Have to put the render clear underneath. There we go. Now it's working. So we've got that far. We can pop up a, a, a screen now. I want the window to be exactly fitting the size of the uh, the screen we're viewing at the moment, or a stream setup, the stream style screen. So I need to change these. I'm going to grab these from another program. So call it three net dot c. Yeah, I want them. I'm going to grab them. I might even do an if def on these. So I might do. Um, Uh, if if zero else and if and then deal full screen screen and make this like nineteen twenty by ten eighty. That will probably do as well. Let's check that works. There we go. Right, we've got the right size screen now. So what's next? What's next? Well, the moment we pop up a window and then it dies after an SDL delay of 2000 milliseconds. So that's not much of a game. We need to do a bit more. We need to create a main program loop. So all this that we've done so far, we're just initializing SDL basically and creating a window and a render, initializing all them parameters and um, then just checking that it works and loading up a screen. And then at the end, we just free all the memory and destroy all the stuff that we've created. So in between doing, uh, setting up, initializing all this stuff and destroying this, at the end, we wanna load up something that persists and uh, continues to loop around until we issue a quit function or a quit statement of some kind. So we need to have a bool quit equals false. And then we need an STL event. So we can detect key presses. I'm going to need a couple of while loops. A pretty standard way of doing about doing this kind of thing. We do while not quit. If we can spell quit, while not quit. So as long as this is false, we won't quit. As soon as that this quit variable becomes true, the yeah, program will jump down to here, destroy the window, destroy the render, and quit. Right, and then we need to while um, SDL whole event and the address of the event and then we need to switch on that event don't we we do event dot type for that and then we do case sdl quit quit equals true so that'll if we issue um <coughs> like um well, in Windows, it's Alt F4, isn't it? But um, in Linux, well, in i3 that I'm using, um, modify Shift Q. So that will detect that event. Right, case SDL key up. And we're going to do nothing for a key up. 
what we want is a key down. So everything is going to be switch down, key down. We want to switch now on the type of key press that we've just pressed. So we want event dot key dot key sim dot sim case SDL K underscore escape detects the escape key press strangely enough as if that isn't explanatory enough and we're going to set the quit to true right that should do us for a main program loop we need to add more to that later on now press escape and the program quits and then just make sure alt shift q and the program quits right so that's all working properly so what do we need? Well, we need a grid, don't we? Um, I don't think we're actually going to have a grid for the end of the, you know, the game once it's finished. But for now, while we're making it, we want to we want to be able to see what um, where everything is and make sure everything's spaced out correctly. So we want some kind of void render grid function, don't we? That's what we want, and that's going to have to take the renderer. We don't want it to be in the top corner of the screen, do we? We don't want it to be full screen. We want the game board to be somewhere in that window we've created. So we're going to have to have an int X and an int Y. And for now, well, what we need in here is a render loop, don't we? So we can get rid of this, put this down here. Render loop start. So working right, and then we want to render grid, and that's going to take the renderer, and it's going to take an x from y. Shall we set it to 200, 200 for now? So it's 200 down and 200 across where we're going to be rendering our grid. That looks about right. So render grid. What we're going to want to do here is render lots of squares to make a grid, aren't we? That's what we're going to want to do. So we're going to need SDL rect. We call cells. I usually call things like that cells. SDL rect cell. What's the size of the cell? We need to specify the size of the grid, don't we? So define grid size. 20. But that's how many segments there is. That's not the actual size in pixels, is it? So we need to de define grid. It's going to be a square, so we don't need an X and a Y. Grid dim, grid dimensions. So we made that 800. Yeah, we've got 1700 by 1400. So we make that 1800. And then each of these squares is going to be. <laughs> The grid dim divided by the grid size, isn't it? Because there's 20 of them, so 800 divided by, yeah, that's going to be right. So int cell size equals grid dim divide grid size. That's going to work, isn't it? And that means the cell dot width equals cell size, cell dot h equals cell size. And then to draw lots of them, we're going to have to do a loop within a loop, aren't we? We've covered this in our loop section. Int i equals zero. i is less than grid size. i plus plus for int i equals zero. i is less. Can't do i again, can we? J equals zero. J is less than grid size. J plus plus. are going to specify the cell dot x position and the cell dot y position. So what's the cell dot x position? It is i times the cell size starting at x. So equals x plus i times the cell size. Throw them in brackets just to specify, make it a bit easier what we're doing. Y, Y, and then J. 
And then for each of them, we need to draw those recs, don't we? So we do SDL render draw rect. And we put the renderer and the address of the rectangle we're doing. We haven't set a specified a color, have we? SDL set render draw color. What color shall we make the grid? Shall we make it gray? I'll do as well. Should work. It does work. We need to sort this color out for the background. We don't want a green background, do we? Should we make it a black background? Not quite black. One one. That's more like it, but we don't want it to be 200 by 200 across. We want that grid to be centered no matter what the size and dimensions of it are. Right, I know what we need to do. We need a couple of values, don't we? We want int grid x equals something int grid y equals something. Let's do one at a time. So window width divide 2 minus grid dim divide 2. And then we're going to need to bracket up, aren't we? That should do us. Then y should be the same height. Yeah, that's going to work. I'm sure of it. Grid x, grid y. Centered, perfect, right? We can test that out as well, can't we? So if we make the size 1000 and the grid size 50. Correct, grid size 10. Looks correct, right, okay. Let's take that back to 20,000, seems like a good size actually. That's a good size for a snake game board, isn't it? We'll leave it at that for now, I've got a cup of tea actually. So what is next? So we've got that far, we've got as far as having a grid. A game board in which we can play snake. I guess the next thing to do is to make a snake. So let's do that. So how are we gonna make a snake? We said we'd make a link list, didn't we? Right, so we need a struct snake. So each part of the snake is gonna have a position on that grid, isn't it? So we're gonna name int x, int y. And the snake is also gonna be heading in a direction. Does every part of the snake need to have a direction or does that need to be like some kind of global? I'm going to make it part of that segment. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And then we need a um, type def struct snake snake. And then we want a snake head and a snake tail and this is why I think link list is the right thing to do because um, it's syntactically correct isn't it <laughs> we've a uh, we very descriptive um, code in here now, now we need to have um, like a create snake function we need an init snake void init snake And we need to malloc, aren't we? So we need to have a snake new equals malloc size of snake. And then new x equals. We want it to be random, don't we? Rand modulus grid size. If we do that, then we could randomize a snake right on the edge of the 
grid, if you know what I mean. And say it randomizes there, and if we also randomize the, the starting direction when the game, game starts, we could randomize at the bottom and be going down. We want to randomize somewhere in the middle of the grid, don't we? How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? We need to do grid size divide 2 plus grid size divide 4. That'll do us. So we're randomizing a range of half and adding a quarter. That'll do as well. And we can do the same thing for Y, can't we? And let's put our snake somewhere in the middle half of the grid. We'll find out. We'll find out if it works or not. Uh, what else have we got? New DIR. We'll just make that up. What are we going to have representing the up? You know, I need an enumerator, aren't we? Enum. Snake. Up. Down. Left. Right. We can start by doing snake up. We can go in that direction, can't we? Yeah. Uh, oh, I haven't, you know what I haven't done? In the snake up here, I need, is a linked list, isn't it? So it needs to point to the next one. So we need struct snake next, don't we? And then new next equals null. And then we just need to do our head equals new and tail equals new because we're only initializing our snake we're just creating the head creating the head of the snake that all looks good that all looks good right now we need void what do you call it when we add something to a snake i don't want to make it add snake because that sounds like we're adding the snake and we're already doing that with an init snake let's do increase a bit of a big word for a function let's do void increase snake and we're going to need to do another new new equals malloc size of snake new x is not going to be random this time it's going to be in relation to the well we increase the snake at the tail don't we So for now, for now, we can just always increase down one. So tail x new y equals tail y minus one. We could do that, couldn't we? Which is not going to work in all cases, but we can change that in a bit. New next equals null. Tail next equals new. Tail equals new. We haven't done the direction now, we haven't done the direction. New dir equals tail dir for now. I'm not sure with the whole direction thing. I haven't really, I just realized I haven't really thought this whole thing through. What do we do with the direction? Is it just the head that moves the direction and then we just like iterate all the, um, because it's got to like follow it each other well i'll figure that out in a minute we'll get a snake drawn on the screen first and we'll figure that out bit and all but now we've got a, di a direction for every segment and that might be required actually let's see if that actually works so init snake increase snake let's see if this crashes well it compiles and it runs so now we need to render a snake, don't we then, if we can do that. Void render snake. That's well, part of a snake. We've already said, haven't we, a seg. We said it over here, snake seg, yeah, segment. SDL set render draw color wants to be green. Five, 
five alpha. And we're going to do the same thing we did here, don't we? So we can just copy that, can't we? But we're going to call this seg size. And then seg dot width equals seg size. Seg dot height equals seg size. I'll be amazed. I mean, I'm planning on doing this in an hour. Half an hour already. Half an hour already. So I've got half an hour to get this game working if I stay on target. <laughs> it's not like a speed run or anything, but I just don't want to make a really long, like, 10 hour video making a snake game. Right. Um, we can't fall. We're going to have to while, aren't we? Through our linked list. So we need a um, snake track equals head while track is not equal to null track equals track next standard link list stuff and then we need the track dot x times Seg size x plus again, isn't it? So we're going to have to sort out this signature up here. SDL render. We need another in x in y. And that is going to be seg x. Seg dot x equals. And we can do the same thing for the y. Yeah, that's going to work, isn't it? I hope. <laughs> right. And then STL render fill rect. Address of seg. Well, there's only one way to find out. No, it don't work. Oh, I haven't called the function ever. So we need to, in fact, exactly the same signature as this isn't it render snake well we're surprised that works <laughs> we've got ourselves a snake so let's confirm that the rest of the code is working correctly by increasing this snake size a few times What's, what's the starting length of a snake in snake? Is it four? I think it's going to be four, isn't it? So I guess next we need to get this snake moving, otherwise it's not going to be much of a game. So what do we need to do with that? We need a move snake function, don't we? Let's make a move snake function. Increase snake, render snake. Shall we do it here? Uh, void move snake. And this is not going to deal with the renderer, is it? So, how are we going to move the snake? So, we're going to need to switch on the head direction, aren't we? And then we can do case snake up break 2yy3p down left. Right. So the snake's going up. We want the head y to be minus minus, don't we? Yeah. Now the snake's going up. We want the head to be. No, it's going down. It's in. Yeah, that's right. And head x for left is minus minus head x plus plus for right shall we just move the head first Gonna be moving very quickly. We're gonna to have to throw in an SDL delay here, aren't we? SDL delay 200, maybe. 
So do we render then move? Let's move then render. Move snake snail. Well, it does work. We want to be able to change direction. Let's get it actually going as a snake first. How am I going to do that? I need to while through again, don't I? So I need a snake track equals head, but we've already moved the head. But we don't want to start at the tail, do we? Right, so we need to do it if track next is not equal to null track equals track next so we jump forward by one and then we while the rest is that the best way to do it track equals track next is that the best way to do it, it looks a bit messy to me a bit hacky I'll say we get it working first and then we can um, clean it up later. So what do we want to do? <clears throat> the, <clears throat> so we can move the head. So we want the next the next element in the linked list to, to be at the position the head was before, don't we? And then when we move that one, we want to move down the linked list one and then move that one back to the position of the previous so we need a prev we need a so before we change this up here we want an int prev x equals head x int prev y equals head y and then we move it now we've still got these old values that are going to become the value of this so we want track x equals prev x and track y equals prev y, don't we? But we actually also need to save these values before we update them because we're going to be using them on the next loop round. So we're going to need another intermediate variable. It can't be the best way to do this. Right, I'm going to do it now because I think it will work. But in save x equals track x. In save y equals track why don't take this as an example of like amazing programming or anything <laughs> this is um do we do it under here so um then we can do prev x equals save x and prev y equals save y that'll work won't it Well, it works. I don't think that was the best way to program that, but it works. So <laughs> you can um, make of that what you will. Well, this is a first run through on Snake. I've, like I said, I've never made Snake before. So this is, I just want something I can get a neural network playing with. I may rewrite this at some point. Let's let's make it so we can change direction. Let's forget about that for the minute. Case SDLK up. Down. Left. I need to get good at doing this kind of thing, doing lengthy programming sessions. Um, this is a practice run for me as much as anything. I need to get good at doing these kind of lengthy programming sessions for when we get to a slightly more, I mean, it's going to be a while going through the C fundamentals, I think. We're not exactly going to hit um, complex neural networks in a couple of weeks' time. I've had a bit of a break from the series. I was, I was writing loads of a massive latex document of... Um, where we're getting up, where, uh, of explaining neural networks. I didn't do a very good job of explaining loops, and afterwards I reflected on it, I thought. I have not planned this at all. I thought, I went from thinking it was a good idea to immediately making it. I might be repeating myself here, I might have said this earlier, but. It's not like I'm very accustomed to recording myself programming, so I'm gonna get better at this, I'm gonna get better at this, but for now, um, this is a, 
as much a practice run for me as it is um, a video about making snake <laughs> in the C programming language. Um, right, so if we're going up, we want our direction to, if we press the up key, we want the direction to be up. So we want um, the head DIR to equal the snake up, don't we? And then down right we want the direction to be right we want the direction to be left and we want the direction to be down let's see if that works and it does look at that we've got a game that we can play now well it's not actually a game because we can do this <laughs> look at this god mode god mode in snake remember when games used to have god modes where you just couldn't die <laughs> well this is god mode in snake <laughs> um before we tidy any of that code up, let's make an apple. Let's do the apple thing. There can't be that much more to do on this to get this actual game. So we need a we need to be able to generate an apple, don't we? And then we need a render apple. Do render apple first, STL renderer. Getting used to this now, we have to pass an X and a Y for the position of our grid. And then we need an SDL rect, what we're gonna call this, app for apple. I think we're gonna to have to gen the apple first because that's gonna give us our coordinates. Right, we'll gen the apple first, we'll change, change the strategy. <laughs> Uh, this should be easy enough. Uh, we need some kind of apple. We're going to need an, a struct, aren't we? Struct apple. Let's type def it. Type def struct apple. And an apple is going to have an X and a Y, isn't it? And we can just make a global apple, can't we? It doesn't like a global apple. Sounds like an apple, a type of apple you can buy. And then global apples that globalists eat. <laughs> right, apple dot x equals rand modulus grid size. Apple can be anywhere, can't it? And same with the y. And we're going to have to call that before we render an apple. You know what? We need to. We haven't re like seeded the random numbers, have we? Let's make a bit of space here. Um, gen. Gen apple. What we need is um, s rand time zero. But I don't think I've got time in the header file, have I? No. Otherwise, the whole random thing isn't going to work, is it? So we've genned an apple. So now we need to draw that apple. So same as before, we need to do um, apple size equals grid dim divide grid size. App dot width equals apple size. App dot h equals apple size. And when there's no loops or anything, we're just doing one apple, aren't we, at a time? So we can just do app dot x equals x plus apple dot x times apple size. I'll do won't it? An SDL draw and fill SDL render fill rect renderer address of app. We need to set a draw color, don't we? SDL re render set render 
draw color rendering 0x ff we're going to make apples red now we should be able to just render apple down here so render snake And we've got an apple, but nothing's going to happen when I get the apple. Right. How long have we been recording for? 45 minutes. I think we might actually do this in an hour. Let's, let's speed things up. I'm already going as fast as I can here. So we want void detect apple. So to detect our apple, we just need an if, don't we? If head dot x equals apple dot x is a capital A, isn't it? And head y equals apple y, then we're on the apple, aren't we? In which case we can do gen apple, and that'll make a new apple. We also want to increase snake. It's going to be a bit slow. I might speed this up a little bit. It doesn't. All right, I'm not running the detect apple function, am I? So we'll put that up at the top. Detect apple. It works, it works. This game needs to run a bit quicker then. I'm going too slow on it. Two hundred. I'm gonna drop that down to at least one hundred. I'm gonna do eighty. That's more like it. That's no, not as frustrating to play. This, in all honesty, making this has played out exactly how I thought it was going to play out, so I planned it well in my head. I didn't spend too long thinking about it, but I was just like, well, we just need a linked list and a grid, and the rest of it kind of takes care of itself, and that turns out to be the case. Is this the best way to make Snake? If anybody knows of any other implementations of Snake, that may be better than this. I don't know if it's going to be very neural network friendly. Because I was thinking initially, I just need a grid of like values to feed into a neural network. And I thought, that's not a very good way of doing it because that's not how I play Snake. And it wouldn't really be that much of a measure of intelligence, would it? If I just had like input neurons of grid width and grid height times grid height. So I've got loads of input neurons. That's not how I would want to do it. Or how, what I would consider to be intelligent. That would just be like... Is it called a linear regression? And the snake's increasing in size as well. It's all working as expected. So what's left? We need to detect crashes, don't we? I don't like the way when we collect an apple that um, it's hard to describe, but it always adds the next snake stack segment above you can only see it sometimes when it's in the right orientation getting carried away playing my snake game here there we go so you saw it then we need to sort that out let's fix that So we're going to need a switch here somewhere, aren't we? And we're going to need to propagate the direction back through the snake on the move snake. Right, I, this is a bit of a 
I'm not sure if this is going to work. If we propagate that back through this, then we can do um, int save. Then we're always propagating the direction ahead backwards through the snake, can't we? In a kind of back propagation algorithm, <laughs> which is very appropriate for zero to neural networks, is it not? <laughs> I reckon that'll work. And then all we need to do is switch on this, don't we? So we just need to do a switch on the tail direction and we can do a case snake up break to y y 3p down left right Actually. so if we're going up if the tail is heading up we want that to be below it. And if the tail is heading down, we want that to be above it. And then if we're going left, we want that to be the same. But if we're going left, we want the tail to be to the right of it. So we want a plus one. And if we're going right, we want the tail to be to the left. Let's see if that works. It seems to be working. I have to slow it down a bit, I think, to really see. Now I've got to sort of, I need to detect crash to make this into a game. I think that's working, I'm surprised. Would it be more complicated than that? I guess we're, yeah, propagating the direction backwards. That means we did need a direction for all the segments, didn't we? Right, now we just need to detect crashes. So if we hit the wall or if we hit ourselves, should be easy enough. So let's make a void a detect. Is that how you spell detect? D T C T. Detect crash. Detect crash. So first the walls. So if we can do that with an if, can't we? If head x is less than. Zero or head X is greater than grid size or head Y is less than zero or head Y is greater than grid size. What happens when we crash? <laughs> One thing detecting a crash, what happens? I know what we need. <laughs> I reckon that'll work. What happens when we crash, though? We, if we need to up here, we need a reset snake function, don't we? Void reset snake. I knew there was just going to be all void functions in this. So, what do we want to do? We want to. I reckon we just clear the entire link list and create a new one. I reckon we do that, so because that's easy to do. So we do um, snake track equals head, and then a snake temp, and then we while through them. So track is not equal to null. 
temp equals track, track equals track, next free temp, and then we want to init snake once again, and then we want to increase snake three times. That's what we did before. So free the old snake and then make a new snake. And we should just be able to call reset snake in our detect crash. And then if we throw that detect crash into our main loop, see what happens. That's working. That runs over, doesn't it? What about down? It's not so much wrong. Yeah, the zeros are working. So the grid size, because it doesn't draw one that side of the grid, so that needs to be an equals to. To, that's going to work, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Sorry, right, that works. And then we just need to check if we're crashing into ourselves. And we're going to do that same way we do with the apple. because the head's always going to be crashing into itself. We want to do the same thing we did before. If track next is not equal to null, track equals track next. Track equals track next. If track x equals head, and that should be a double equals and track y equals head y oh we do the same thing reset snake have to make the snake a bit bigger to test this out Hey, it works, it works right, that worked, that worked. Yeah. Easy peasy programming, easy peasy, sorry. <laughs> now, I've just thought of something that's probably gonna be an error. I'll make this. for a little bit yeah that I'm generating an apple anywhere and that apple could end up inside the snake couldn't it and that's going to become more of a problem as the game progresses so how am I going to sort that out I'm not seeing much evidence of it here, but I'm sure, well, I'm certainly just generating a random apple. It's not taking into account the snake at all. I should have left it as a bigger screen. Ah, well, I'm sure. I'm... All that, and it couldn't even prove it that back to 20 so how how I'm gonna make sure this gen apple yeah it's just it's anywhere in the grid size that could end up in the snake couldn't it so I'm gonna to have to 
do another snake track equals head and another while through them, aren't I? And for each of them, I'm going to have to check if the track x equals apple x and track y equals apple dot y for everyone. How am I going to do that? I'm going to need a bool, aren't I? Bool in snake. I'm going to have to put this whole thing in a do while loop, aren't I? Let's do that. Do while. And I want while in snake. We want to set that initially to false and then if this is true we want in snake to equal true which will trigger it to do it again ah, I think that'll work so we generate an apple we cycle through the entire snake this doesn't seem like a very efficient way to do this we cycle through the entire snake and if any of any of the parts of the snake are at the same coordinates as the apple the in snake becomes true which will force this to go round again that'll set the in snake back to false we generate a new apple we cycle through again and then if this never gets to become true, then we're happy with that apple and we can continue. Let's see if that works or if it just crashes in some infinite loop. Well, I'm not gonna play it for ages to confirm that it is working, but I get the impression that that is gonna work. That does work. I think we've made snake. I think that might do it for this video. How long are we on? Are we on an hour yet? Yeah, one hour, two minutes. So one hour, snake in an hour. You know what? One last change before I call this video at the end. I am, um, where's the render grid gone? I think we need to see the entire grid. Let's do an if def on that. Let's do a stl rect outline outline dot x equals x outline dot y equals y outline dot width equals grid dim outline dot h equals grid dim stl Render draw rect address of outline and then we can probably do that here, can't we? If zero else and if. I don't really like that outline color. Let's make it blue. That's better. Right, that does it. That that does it for this video. So, not the most exciting video, but it's just me practicing doing um, slightly more extensive programming uh, with um, while recording. And um, 
I needed a snake game. I'm going to connect this up to a neural network. I might even do that as a, like a... I should probably do this every now and again, do slightly lengthier videos that aren't just explanation explaining the C language, even though we're obviously not haven't covered any of the stuff that I've just done in this video. Maybe it's helpful seeing things get made. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm figuring this out as I go along, but I'm determined to make this a really good C programming series. The, um, the basic premise, I think, is sound. And uh, it's not entirely altruistic. I have my own objectives with doing this series. What I would very much like to do is achieve a position in life where I can basically be a self-funded AI researcher because I've become absolutely obsessed with neural networks. And as it goes, apparently if you build up a sizable enough following on the internet doing something, then you can make enough money to live off it. And uh, I'm a man of simple needs. I don't have much I need in life, just time. And I don't think anyone's gonna pay me to do the kind of stuff I wanna do with neural networks. Can you imagine if I went to a um, a company or a rich person who had loads of money to invest in. I was like, what I want to do is make, you know, have you seen Star Wars? Well, I want to make droids like in Star Wars and I want to do that um, from scratch in C because um, that's the only place it seems to make sense. And I haven't got it all figured out yet. It's probably going to take us about 10 years. <laughs> and um, I'm not overly interested in generative AI or money-making AI solutions, just making droids. <laughs> I can't imagine I would get too many investors. I can't get this middle apple, can I? <laughs> I can't imagine I'd get too many people investing their money in me or giving me a job to do that. So I'm going to have to kind of forge that myself. So I figure if I can um, build some kind of um, following on the internet, and I'm, I'm not one for marketing and sales myself. Nothing against them like, it's just not really my thing. So I just do something useful then. There's gotta be at least a million people out in the world who wanna learn how to program neural networks from scratch and especially in the C programming language and people who wanna get really good at the C programming language as well. So we just keep hammering away at that for a year or so. Maybe I'll get enough, um, enough of a following to be able to fund my own AI research. That is the plan. And at the very least, I'll have been very productive. I've already made a GitHub, but I've never bothered with GitHub before because, I just, well, I've not been doing anything like this, recording videos or anything. Just, I didn't think there was much point in it, but I'm getting very into all this online programming world. And I've learned a lot from other people, watching other people program online. So as I see it, I can, um, give back a bit of knowledge as well. Like I say, there's a lot of people who um, struggle getting started with the C programming language or programming in general. And uh, I think the biggest problem is that they take it too seriously and uh, they worry too much about what other people think. I don't worry about what other people think at all. I could not care less. I uh, started programming when I was a tiny little kid and I still treat programming like I did back then when I was a kid. I do it for fun. I do it because I enjoy learning about computers and making computers do stuff. I ain't trying to prove anything to anybody and I ain't trying to, um, I'm going to die, I got to get out of it. And um, I'm not necessarily trying to come up with massive uh, money making ideas. I just want to make interesting things that interest me and hopefully interest other people as well. But that's a, a bonus more than an objective. And I reckon I can do a very good C series. I'm struggling a bit at the moment getting started. Like I said, I didn't do a very good explanation of loops. And um, I reflected on it afterwards and I was like, it's because it's such a simple concept. I mean, I can explain the mathematics for neural networks in great detail. I died. I died. Anyway, that's enough of that. But um, explaining something as simple as loops, the simpler it is, the harder it is to explain it does seem to be. Um, anyway, anyway, so that's, that'll do. So I'll stick this on a, on a GitHub. I'll start advertising the GitHub that I've only just made to uh, complement the series and um, next time I do a bit of a hardcore programming sesh, I'll probably be integrating this into a neural network. That's, I don't know, I don't know. I've got about the next 10 parts of uh, the, the regular series made now, so.
Uh, like uh, planned rather not not made I haven't recorded them yet so I'll just do them as and when but I'm definitely going to increase my uh, output and frequency I should be able to get a video out every um, day I would hope or, um, at least every other day right we'll call it a day at that so that is how you make snake in C and um, if anyone's got any suggestions on a better way of doing it I will happily take suggestions uh, not convinced this prev Prev and save is the right way to go about it. I'm going to rethink that. I'm not even sure if linked lists are the right way to go. Like maybe I should just treat the entire game as a grid in memory and just move grid elements around. I was thinking that might be a better way, but just because of the head and tail thing, I thought now I'm going to go for head and tail um, uh, linked list style. Right. Um, I'll probably do the next part in the uh, series later on today. Um, see you later, everyone. Goodbye.